All right. Hey, hey how's, how's everybody, everybody doing? doing? Hey, good evening. I'm really glad that you are joining us here. It is Saturday night, and uh, boy, the world is coming to an end, I guess, for those of you on either the East Coast or the West Coast, because, uh, I don't know, Arizona's opening up. I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, hey, welcome to uh, a stand-up conversation. I'm your host, Jeff Rawls, and uh, today we have uh, uh, one, of, uh, one of our good friends, somebody who's been with us for a, uh, for a while. He's uh, uh, a, a former jester and all that. We're excited to have him joining us from California. He was just giving me an update, letting me know that everything is still shut down. And uh, it sure is nice to be here in Arizona where a few things are opening up. Not a lot, but they are a little bit uh, here and there. <laughs> Some things are... Uh, I will tell you that uh, even though the um, uh, the haircutting places have opened up, I still uh, could use a, a, a haircut. So if anybody here is locally wants to give me a haircut, I'll take it. All right. Well, thank you so much for uh, for joining us, and uh, let us know if you uh, let us know you are here with us in the chat. So um, let's see. If you go to uh, click on one of the links down at the bottom, it'll say uh, you know watch on YouTube, and you can uh, you can join us. So let me uh, let me pull that up because I want to make sure that we're getting uh, that we are getting the chat. Um, and uh, watch, uh, make sure that we've got uh, the chat going. So um, let's see. I think what's going to probably happen here is there we go. All right. So uh, make sure you join us in the chat. I'm going to be watching for that. If you have any questions uh, or if you have any topics that you would like to uh, like us to, uh, to to talk about tonight, that would be great. I am ready for my guest. My guest, can you hear me? Are you there, Paul? Can you see me? Can you hear me? Are you around? Is there anything that you would like to say? Good morning, good evening, and good night. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? I am here. Can you hear me? I sure, Hello? <laughs> I sure can. I sure can. Hey, really glad to have you here. Um, Likewise. Yeah. Hey, so a uh, little bit of uh, information about Paul. He has uh, he has uh, joined Jester's. Golly, what was it like nine, 10, 12 years ago? How long you been doing it with us? I started classes January 2008 and I joined the troop in it would have been the summer of 2008. And then in 2014, I moved to Los Angeles. So that would have been what a good six year six year run there. Yeah. No, yeah. 2015 I moved to Los Angeles, so seven years. Yeah, and uh, and now you're in Hollywood, so you're like famous. Like I heard that Hi, any any co any oh, comedian that goes to uh, goes to L. A. All of a sudden immediately becomes famous. Yeah. It's incredible. I thought it would take a lot of work and a big break, but I just got off the plane and all of a sudden, uh, you know, this guy pulled up in a limo and he's like, hey, kid, you look like you're going to be a star. I got in the limo and then I got a Netflix <laughs> special and, uh, you know, then I got addicted to drugs. I mean, the whole thing just happened just like that. It You've already been happy. It's already been happening. That's, that's I had three marriages that all failed with A-list comedians and they're sticking me for alimony. I mean, I just lived that Hollywood dream. So uh, what uh, what restaurant are you working at nowadays? <laughs> no. Well, none of them. They've all been shut down. Yeah. So. Well, I cannot imagine. I was in, for Lloyd. For yeah, Lloyd. I cannot imagine in L.A. how, you know, first of all, you know, a lot of the, the, the productions are shut down. And, uh, you know, when, when you're not a working actor, working entertainer, that, you know, you, you fall back on your side job, right? You're doing, uh, uh, you're working as a, 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 you know, wait staff or whatever. And uh, that's shut down, too. So what is Hollywood doing for, for work these days? Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of, uh, Instagram, uh, live feed videos. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people just doing TikToks. I will say that there There's are a lot, more, a lot of TikToks. <laughs> yeah, there are more famous people on TikTok and Instagram. Uh, you know, everybody's starting their YouTube channel, whereas before they could care less, they had people to yeah. do that for them. Right. Yeah. Are you following? Yeah, been, uh, are you following anybody? Any famous people on uh, any of the social medias? 
You know, somebody who I really like, who's not super famous, you probably wouldn't know it right off the bat, but his name is uh, Kurt Fox. Um, you know, he's had like B-rolls and TV and stuff like that. And he's been in the comedy world forever, but just a brilliantly funny comedian. And he's been, uh, you know, he'll just hop on Instagram in his backyard. He's incredibly funny. Uh, he was about to film another uh, comedy special, but that got da 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 delayed. <laughs> and uh, he does have a comedy special on Showtime, I think, which is which is really funny. So I like watching him. Uh, Mike Berbiglia, who's a I'm a big fan of Mike Berbiglia. He's been doing live, uh, yeah, yeah, like conversations on Instagram. He had like John Mulaney on last week, and you know, just talking and catching up. You know, it's a it, it 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 does kind of put everybody at the same level. You're like, wow, you know, <laughs> doesn't matter how wealthy you are or how famous you are, you're um, staying you know, like, at home. You, you're staying yeah. at home, right? <laughs> you're doing you know, TikToks just like Susie, you know, <laughs> doing his YouTube channel from his you know little office there. You know, it's just, right, right. So yeah, it's been uh, yeah, it's been interesting. Yeah, we were just talking about some of those uh, kind of, uh, you know, lower tier actors. I don't want to say lower tier. It's just, you know, they're not the, that A-list actor that everybody recognizes, right? Will Smith, The Rock, Julia Roberts, you know, Brad Pitt type ones. Um, but, uh, you know, some of those so, some of those lesser, you know, but they're in every single movie, right? Um, one of my favorite, we were just talking about uh, Luis Guzman. Uh, you know who yeah. he is? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, he was. I was watching uh, Narcos, all of them, because yep. I had plenty of time. And he was in. He was in one of the Narcos as one of like the drug cartel guys. <laughs> um, and I swear, I just watched something else with him, which I cannot think of what it was. Some. Oh, it might have been. I think it was like an Adam Sandler, one of those Adam Sandler, David Spade, Netflix comedy. You know, there's a hundred of those movies. Um, I don't remember which one, but he was in there, you know, just had this small role. So I feel like you just got a very important text. Yeah, I, I, I did. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as a producer, not only am I, uh, you know, doing this and doing that because uh, of uh, quarantine, I'm, I'm, I'm hitting this up all by myself. Uh, but I've also got, uh, I've actually got somebody at my door right now dropping off bread. Uh, and so I, I didn't want to leave him hanging. So I actually put you on video while I quietly did my little text here. Uh, you know, but I could see you. you. <laughs> right. You could see me, and but the, like, that's, the that's audience, me. <laughs> I was listening to you. I was listening to you. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta tell you. You know, it, some things never change. You know, some people still like, are just uh, gonna text in the middle of conversation. Or still, a, just as disconnected as ever. Just a, a date, uh huh, uh huh. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, Paul. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. So your ex? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Tell me more about. That. Right. 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 Uh, do you find that a lot on dates that a lot of people are, uh, you know, looking, you know, it's kind of uh, spending more time on the phone, uh, more. I mean, do do you see that on dates anymore? Or well, not not um, anymore, but uh, nowadays. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I don't date a ton, but uh, you know, I, actually, I will say this: if if I'm actually like out with a girl and it's like we are on a date, it's like I, I find that like people know better. If I'm just hanging out with like a friend or whatever, then we're on our phones all the time. Like we don't care about each right, other. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> it's like this, this is just a friendly date. This is just a friendly yeah, date. So you know, we, we're just hanging out. We're having a good time. We could be on. I'm phone. not trying to impress you, but <laughs> if I'm like out romantically with a woman, you know, I'll, I'll be really like, I'll put my phone in my pocket. I'll turn it off. I will be like, no, I'm here. I want to focus. I want to get to know you. Um, right. Yeah. And if a woman like on her phone, then I'm kind of like, yeah, it's a turn off. So, um, uh, uh, speaking of quarantine and dating, um, not to kind of pour some, some salt in, uh, in a wound, but, uh, uh, how did you, I, I heard, uh, <laughs> did you get dumped before quarantine or what, uh, what's the, what's the rumor yeah. on that? What was that all about? Wow. Well, we're bringing that up. Yeah. Huh? Sorry. Okay, well, well, you know, it's salt in the wound. I'm so sorry. I did, you know. Uh, you know, we're transparent around here. I just want to go right for the jugular. We're just going to be vulnerable and that's right. Yeah. No, I did. I got dumped. Uh, I got dumped. Uh, yeah. She told me that I didn't respect her boundaries. So 
She called me. She dumped me. Actually, when she told me that, though, I actually felt pretty bad. So I got off the phone and I drove to her house immediately to apologize. And uh, yeah, <laughs> she wasn't at home, though. So I drove to her work and I was just like, hey, I'm really sorry for not respecting your boundaries. And <laughs> Hold on. Let me guess. She wasn't there. So you followed her on her date. Uh, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. No. no, 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 no. She, I, I did hack her phone and find her GPS and then catch right. her at the gas station. I wouldn't go on a date, all right? I respect boundaries. <laughs> that would just be over the top. Oh, she also told me She also told me that she could never date me because I'm emotionally high maintenance. And you want to know what? That made me cry. So, <laughs> Well, there, there might be some truth to that. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> Uh, no, but I can imagine. What do you mean? I, I am totally emotionally stable, uh, Jeff. I no, I hey, Paul, I love you for who you are. <laughs> no. Yeah, that sounds like something you say it's, to people who aren't that great. Right? It's not me. It's you. <laughs> no, wait, it's not you. It's me. Uh, no, you know, um, uh, 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 having been uh, married for uh, for nineteen years now. Uh, talk about talk about emotionally unstable. Uh, no. <laughs> you know, uh, speaking of that, I mean, I was just we were just talking about you know being on a date and texting. My wife and I we did go out uh, uh, grab something to eat this afternoon, and I just found our found ourselves just you know she's on her phone, I'm on mine, and I'm like. Yeah, that's 19 years right there. <laughs> we, we've maintained stability by, uh, you know, mostly by not talking. As much as <laughs> no, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, so, are you? Uh, how's things going for dating in quarantine? Uh, how's well, that going for you? Yeah, I think I think probably like the most discouraging thing about being in quarantine and my dating life is like it's a fa- like being in quarantine. It's effect on my dating life has been um, entirely negligible. Actually, that's that's been I'm I'm dating as much as I was before. I there's been I, I thought I would be dating more because like now all these women they don't have excuses. Like I know you're home, <laughs> and <I'm> like right. <laughs> it's like I'm sorry, like, I gotta oh, wash my like, hair. Oh, I'm yeah. going out. I'm like, no, you're not going out tonight. I know you're at home. But now they're like, oh, I have to practice social distancing, and I'm like, why is every woman saying that now? And like, you might as well just say I have to wash my hair. And I'm like, I know you're not going out to get your hair cut because they're all closed down. So right, right, right. Uh, so all of those excuses. Uh, yeah, there was uh, right at kind of the onset of all of this. You know, it's like, hey, you know the gestures were still open we're just broadcasting our shows uh, but we need some performers we're going to keep our space you know uh, but we'd love to have you oh i can't i'm busy um doing what like you're staying home not dying <laughs> <laughs> right no I, I don't mean to throw the throw our performers under the bus by any means uh, because uh, it is sociably responsible however it does take a toll on your dating life yeah yeah um, yeah, but you know, well, I, I wish it took a toll on my dating life. You know, I, I it, that would have been nice being like, oh, I'm dating less than I was before. But it's like, no, about once every three months. That's about that's about right. So if I uh, if I get a date, you know, in about a month after quarantine, I'll still be right on par for what I was doing before. So. Still on. That's uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, speaking of dating, uh, it just reminded me of one of the uh, one of the first dates that I took my wife out, Sherlyn, on. Uh, and I took her to the comedy club that I was performing at and, of course, got there early because I had to be there early. And I sat her right on uh, like right on the row, right down the middle aisle, sat her right there on the row and at the time with the uh, with the oxymorons improv troupe we were able to kind of walk around and and talk with uh with the the audience as they came in and uh so every now and again i'd kind of walk up behind her and i'd lean down into her ear and i'd <laughs> i'd i'd you're the hottest girl here <laughs> and i get like no response because I can't imagine why that sounds incredibly <laughs> charming. That doesn't no. seem creepy at all when you're like, hi, you're the <laughs> no, girl. it was in a flirting way, but I, Oh yeah, no, I caught that. I caught that. <laughs> no. Yeah. So, uh, you know, but I, I came up behind her, you know, kind of just over her left shoulder and I kind of whispered a little sweet, nothing in her ear and, and, uh, and, and like zero response, not even just like, oh, that's cute, you know, but like nothing. There's like blank stare, just looking ahead. And then all of a sudden she kind of turns her head here and I catch the corner of her eye and she goes, oh, I'm sorry, what? And she turns her <laughs> entire head 
because she's deaf in her left ear, like completely <laughs> deaf, like a hundred percent deaf. And I didn't, uh-huh. I didn't know this at the time. And so I'm whispering these sweet, nothing little, little, you know, charming flirty words to her thunk, just like this brick wall. <laughs> You know? Man, you <laughs> would have known that. <laughs> I mean, because that's clearly what was amiss there. It wasn't the right. creepy sentence. <laughs> Actually, I think I might have done you a favor. <laughs> right, right. You, heard those. you wouldn't be eating in a restaurant texting on your phone 19 years later. Right. Well, then it then it turns to be like, I'm sorry, what? And like she turns her entire body around and I'm like, oh, well, you know, I was saying how like I'm looking around and you're the hottest. You know, if I have to explain it, it's not flirting. <laughs> So, <laughs> you know, so, uh, yeah, I, I've had, I, I had a lot of problems, uh, a lot of, uh, great stories. If any of my, uh, you know, girls that I went out with, uh, I had a lot of really great stories, but I also had some terrible ones. You know, in eighth grade, I knew that I was going to name my firstborn. I knew that I was going to name him Jefferson. And the reason for that, I had a friend named Jackson whose dad's name was Jack I had uh, a friend named Garrison, whose dad's name was Gary. It was Dennis. Um, oh, no, <laughs> yeah. I just, no, no. Uh, it actually was Gary. And so, son of Jack Jackson, son of Gary Garrison. I just knew son of Jeff Jeffrey uh, would be Jefferson. And so, in eighth grade, I knew my firstborn Jefferson. And so, I, I was dating this girl. And I said to her, you know, I, I, I don't think we were even at that level in our relationship where you're talking about children. Like, that's not. In eighth grade. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> no. I know when I was dating in eighth grade, I wasn't like, well, I think no. it's about time. You know, we have the child talk. How many no. do you want? And do you know their names yet? No, no, no. I w- <laughs> Later on in life. Later on in oh, life, okay. yeah. No. <laughs> the name happened in eighth grade, but then when you were an actual a reasonable dating age. Yes, yes. 20 something, <laughs> I'm now I'm now, you know, dating and you know, dating for real. So uh-huh. uh yeah, so uh we're we're on this conversation. I said, you know, hey, just so you know, like my firstborn, his name will be Jefferson. And she's like, Oh my gosh, like why would you name a child after a last name? Like you couldn't do that. Like I would never be able to name my child Jefferson or you know. And so I looked at her, I was like, We're done. Like <laughs> like you know, like I'm sorry if that's if, if like if that's where you are and this is where I am. This ain't happening. It's just not going to work. Like, there's no you sense. Have emotional compatibility, you know. <laughs> That's otherwise. right. So I just, I just knew that we weren't compatible. She wasn't willing to, uh, to go with my, uh, my, my child's first name. So, uh, Got the dumper. Yeah. Uh, so I ended up meeting, uh, meeting Sherlyn, and uh, so now we have six children, all of them named after presidents: Jefferson. Uh, then there's Jackson, whose father's name is Jack. There's no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. Madison, whose father's name was, is Maddie. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Emerson, yeah. whose father's name is Emmer. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, we've got Jack's, it's, sorry. <laughs> Let me get my children's names straight. Jefferson, Lincoln, Obama, oh, no. Trump. You're ruining my Trump-erson. joke. You're ruining my joke. Obamerson, Trumperson, Trump- Clintonson, Trumperson. <laughs> yeah. Usherson. <laughs> okay, sorry. You have a joke. No, 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 it's all spent. So at the end of telling That's you all the names of my children, I then get into uh, you know the fact that we're gonna a- adopt and uh, name him Obama, and uh, after three months or so, this is the change we didn't want. Uh, <laughs> And then oh, so the whole nah, that's all right. Hey, that this is all about you, not me, brother. This is all about you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What are you doing, Ben, <laughs> Jeff? <laughs> yeah. I thought I had was exclusive my contract that all comedic bits will come from me. That's right. This is this is your time. No sense in <laughs> in me sharing any of my stories. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, but uh, part Especially of that. Especially ones with very obvious punchlines. I mean, I saw that one coming. A mile, a mile away. away. <laughs> yeah, no, actually, it's, uh, we ended up, uh, you know, we ended up adopting an Oompa Loompa. So, all right. Yeah, that's usually the reaction that I get out of, <laughs> you know, like, why, why? It's an orange skin, fake hair. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, hey, uh, speaking of kids, 
uh, you've got uh, actually, sorry, I always get this. And, and I think that there's, uh, you know, if, by the way, if you're in the chat, we want to hear from you. So uh, Sherry, we're going to do a quick shout out. Sherry, excellent to see you too. Um, greetings to Georgia. Greetings to Georgia. Lee, hello to Queen Creek. Yes. Lee is watching from Queen Creek. Jim Cressy is uh, from Gilbert and Awkward Monkey 86. Uh, Paul, did you know that there are 85 other Awkward Monkeys? Yes, I've met I've met 83 of them, but still three to go. So I'm really excited that Awkward 86. Uh, we we always try to give a shout out. Not, not one more. <laughs> we always try to give a shout out. Uh, so. Do any of them have questions? Do any of them want to ask me anything, or are they just kind of like passively watching? Uh, right now, everybody's kind of passively passively watching. Uh, but it, uh, yeah, I was going to let you guys know. They're probably on their phones like you were, Jeff. Yeah, if uh, if you do have uh, a topic that you would like us to explore, uh, if you've got a question for Paul or, or anything like that, by all means, uh, hit us up. And uh, in the chat, uh, which is at uh, the Jester's Improv, uh, this live stand-up conversation off to the right. So uh, by always, uh, you know, g give us uh, any kind of a topic. But we were just talking about uh, about children. I have six kids, Jefferson, Lincoln, Pierce Ford and Truman, those are my five boys. And I have one daughter named Roosevelt. You can check her out. She's raising a million dollars for abused children and child help. Go to uh, check it out with Roosevelt Sings. In fact, I'm going to put that. I'm not, uh, by the way, don't click on this and go away from our video, but I'm going to put it in. Uh, no, in stay here. Yeah, stay here. Uh, but I'm going to put it in the chat here. Uh, you can Google Don't her. Don't support children yet. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> wait till we're done. <laughs> Stay with us. Stay with us for the now. Children can wait. <laughs> Stay with us for now. We will. Uh, but uh, Roosevelt sings. Check her out on uh, on all of the social media. She's uh, she is going to uh, change the world. So, all right. Um, so uh, you've got seventeen nieces and nephews. Is that what I hear? I do. Yeah, I uh, I love them all. I do. Um, for some reason, though, like people get weirded out when I try to explain to them how much I love kids. And I'm like, why is that such a, like I love kids? What's wrong with that? Right. It's like like I went to the park and all of like the parents are like I'm just hanging out and they're like huddling <laughs> their kids. I'm like, OK, I love kids. And uh, I actually a good buddy of mine, uh, an old roommate, uh, he uh, he texted me a few months ago. He's like, hey, Paul, I'm in town with my two kids. Why don't you come hang out with us at the Children's Museum? And I was super excited. Hadn't seen him or his kids in a while. So I'm like, I'll be right there. So I run down the stairs. I grab my trench coat, hop in the car, <laughs> right to the Children's Museum. Hold on. And, hold on. Uh, you for some reason, when I hold get on, there, hold though, on. You took a trench coat? <laughs> you, what, you don't. No. Uh, you don't as a, the stairs? No. As a father of six, that's where you oh, went yeah, wrong. Oh, yeah, it was raining. <laughs> okay. All right. Continue. Um, it was just raining, Jeff. I understand why I wouldn't wear a trench coat. So anyway, yeah, so I get to the Children's Museum, though, and they won't let me in. And all I do is just walk over to the ticket lady. I was like, yes, one adult for the Children's Museum, please. And uh, she goes, sir, this is a museum for children. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm here to meet some kids. No, no, and, no, no, uh, no, 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 no. She goes, sir, no. I'm sorry, but you have to be a parent or a guardian. Yeah, that's usually smart. <laughs> Jeff, I was there to meet some kids. I'm here to meet, meet my buddy's kids. <laughs> And then she goes, sir, you have to be a parent or a guardian. And I'm like, well, sometimes they call me uncle. And um, <laughs> oh, and finally she goes, sir, I'm sorry, but I can't let you to the museum unless you have kids with you. I'm like, yeah, but I can't get to the kids unless you let me into the museum. So I'm just like, uh, what is so wrong about me just loving kids and wanting to go see them and hang out with them? I, it's really, uh, really hurtful. I had to explain the whole thing again to security. <laughs> Yeah. So, but yeah, I, I genuinely love kids. Oh, Paul, there's so what? many things wrong with that story. There's just, well, if we could dissect where yeah, you wrong went, with that story, where you went wrong, they wouldn't let me into the children's museum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they wouldn't let me into the children's museum to hang out with my friend and his good and his good uh, and and his kids who, like, we were really tight. Like, I love this roommate. Actually, uh, true story, trivia question. Uh, 
that buddy and his two kids actually exist. And those two kids <laughs> were actually on America's Got Talent. So this is a trivia question for anybody watching. Um, you can uh, message me on Paul Green Comedy or Jeff at wherever Jeff gets <laughs> itched. Just make sure it's during an interview with another person <laughs> and he'll answer it right away. So trivia question. Uh, so Jeff, uh, so here's the thing. I'll, I'll tell you what the answer is. And uh, do you have like a freebie that you can offer for anybody who gets the right answer? Yeah. You... By the way, I didn't talk to him about this beforehand, so I'm totally <laughs> throwing him under the bus. Uh, yeah. So uh, you'll get me the answer. You'll 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 get me the answer to uh, yeah. to what so anybody, this question is. You... Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a true story. I'm not making this up. So he's an old roommate of mine, and he married a woman who already had two kids. So they were technically his stepkids, this buddy who I was hanging out with. But those two kids were on America's Got Talent. Okay. So if you can tell Jeff who those two children are, who were my ex-roommates, but still good friends, stepkids, who I actually did go meet at a children's museum... Jeff will give you what, Jeff? What, what's their prize? Um, gosh, uh, we'll give a, a free month of uh, Fun E Network uh, membership. A free month, fifteen dollar value. Yeah, free oh. free month of uh, Fun Start E Network. That. You get one guess. All right, so, one guess. None of this guessing, and then oh, that's not in another one. So um, let's say um, if you put it in the chat. Uh, if you're live, put it in the chat. If you are, um, if this is a rebroadcast, uh, we'll do this for the next 48 hours till, uh, let's say till, uh, till Monday night. And, uh, so anybody who gets, who guesses it correctly, will give you a free month of uh, the membership of fun e network.com. How's that? All right. You can put it Sounds in, great. you can put it in the chat right now. Sorry, I totally threw that on you. I didn't gonna happen <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're like hey jeff give them free stuff like you could give them like ten dollars yeah. of your own money jeff's gonna give you a car <laughs> it's a new car jeff's gonna give you a car we didn't talk about this but... <laughs> okay so i'm gonna throw you under the bus anyway uh... i just thought that would be a fun a li little trivia thing Paul yeah. is going to give you uh, do it. I used to drive school buses. A free massage for the person who can answer. No. <laughs> All right. Uh, Honestly, I'm so desperate for human contact. I totally would do that, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul, you are uh, you are missed around here. By the way, um, there's a lot of uh, you know as as we've been doing our shows over the years. Uh, you were, uh, have always been one of the people that everybody asks about. I know you and I have had this conversation a number of times, uh, but you know, when you reach a certain level, a uh, comedic level that your audience is asking for you by name, or they're asking about that one guy who, and then they go back and they tell you like what you said, what you did, uh, you know, <laughs> the scene that you did this one thing with that guy where he did this and you jumped on his back and oh my gosh, that guy is so funny. Um, how are you handling fame in Hollywood? <laughs> oh, it's actually really easy, Jeff. I'm not famous at all. <laughs> Well, you're famous around here. We See, yeah, that, that <laughs> happened a lot at Gesture. Since I moved to Hollywood, that hasn't happened once. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you'd like, we so, can uh, just come and stand well, around actually. the theater. You just stand around the theater and just kind of <laughs> – like you, you could be in your trench you coat and be thing. like <laughs> – Trench coat trying to go to the children's museum? See, here's the thing hey, you're that one about guy. Hollywood. And by the way, let me be, yeah, let me be very blunt. I – I love it here. Like, but I, I kind of look at it like, you know, when you're in like, you know, Arizona, which is a smaller co comedic market, it's like, yeah, you may be the top high school quarterback, but then it's like, I moved to Hollywood and it's like, you know, you're going to the pros and all of a sudden I'm like the drafted free agent. Like nobody was asking for me. <laughs> you know, nobody. So like, right. So, I mean, like uh, I, I've walked into like small dinky comedy clubs and we'll see like people who I know, like um, Jack McBrower, I once just showed. A matter of fact, I was just hiking um, up to the Hollywood sign the other day, up through the neighborhood. And I kid you not, Jack McBrower was just sitting 
in a driveway talking to some people and just just hanging out like and i'm just walking i'm like that's that's you know uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> and you do these double takes and like you know like you were talking about with uh, with with luis guzman it's like I cannot tell you how many times I'll just see somebody like that, you know? Right. You know, I, you don't always, I don't see a lot of A-listers, although I've, I've seen a couple, you know, like uh, I saw Jason Alexander once just hanging out in front of a comedy club that his son was performing at. I've met laying on a with couch, his son. He's a laying on a couch in his underwear. Really no, funny, boxers. brilliant performer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> leaning on a couch come, in boxers. Um, <laughs> You know, Andy Dick showed up to one of my performances that's in the small comedy club. Woo. You know, I know he's in a lot of trouble, but like, you know, and like uh, D- Dave Keckner, uh, Neil Flynn, who was the janitor in Scrubs. Yeah. You know, yeah. and like, so it's kind of interesting, you know, like, and nobody really cares. Like, they're just there. They're just regular human beings, you know, so it, it just kind of readjusts the whole fame and it's like, you know, people just don't care, care that much. You know what I mean? It's like, they're just a human being who's trying, you know, who's trying to make it. And, you know, it's like so many actors, it's like, yeah, maybe they had a big role or whatever, but it's like, what have they done lately? Right. You know well, I mean? and, and, yeah. You know, and, and they're also just regular. Memory, so, yeah, they're also just regular human beings. Uh, you know, I've had the opportunity to, yeah. uh, to interview Dick Van Dyke, worked with Sean Astin. You've worked with Sean yeah. Astin as well, you know, and uh, some oh, of yeah. these, some of these celebrities, when you get to meet them, yeah, I mean, they're just regular people that, uh, you know, that we as a society have placed on some sort of a pedestal of, uh, wow, you did something great and we like you. Um, but I will tell you, and, and, and sorry. And so with that meeting all of these famous people, I've never gotten tongue tied. I've never, uh, you know, you know, praised up and down. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm so nervous to be around in, in your presence. I've never, ever been one of those, uh, kind of, kind of people, uh, except for one time. It's only happened one <laughs> time. And that's because she caught me off guard. I did not expect, oh, I thought it was me. No, nah. <laughs> I did not expect, uh, Linda Carter, uh, to, oh, yeah. Wonder, Woman. Wonder Woman. Yeah. So, uh, she was walking out of a hotel in downtown Phoenix as I was, as I was walking in and there, there was like a car was she wearing go- gold gauntlets. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, Office she was just, <laughs> she was just in her, uh, her regular attire. It is regular, you know, just regular clothes. Well, she hadn't spun around yet. She right. has to spin around. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there were cars and everything. And so we were forced to kind of walk between these cars together. And as she's walking towards Meaning me. Meaning you jumped over five or six cars to get to her? <laughs> I, did the Duke, I did the Dukes of Hazard slide. Yeah. <laughs> Right, right. Well, I mean, we just happened to after I sprinted and hopped over and was bumping old ladies out of the way. Right. Throwing scrollers aside so I could just happen to be walking by Linda Carter. Oh, I didn't know you were walking here. Oh, oh my God. I, I walk this way all the time. Oh. How funny to, that we would run into each other. That's so weird. Uh <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, no, she, uh, so she was walking one way and I, and as I'm walking towards her, I'm like, you're like, uh, <laughs> and I, I could not form a sentence. I like, and she's like, hi. And I, like, I just kept walking, but I was like keeping eye contact with her and I was, uh, you know, you want to know what you should have done, Jeff, what you should have done is you should have creeped up behind her on her right shoulder and been like, you are you're the not. sexiest wonder woman. <laughs> So much more sexy than Gal Gadot. And then, you know, then, you know. Uh, the OG, <laughs> the OG. But that's the only time, the only time that I've ever been, uh, I don't want to say starstruck, uh, but it was just, yeah, I guess, let's call it starstruck. That was the only time. And primarily because when I was 12 and 13 years old, Wonder Woman was the woman, <laughs> right? Am I yeah. right? <laughs> you know, Jeff, I do not want to hear about your uh, pubescent no. <laughs> experience. <laughs> That's all right. I don't want to share it, just so you know. Yeah. Just so you know. <laughs> you know, there was one experience where I wasn't necessarily tongue-tied, but I, I got this random background actor role. Um, it, it was kind of a funny experience because this has never happened before me, but I just got this email. It's like, background needed ASAP. And this was the description, Jeff. The description was bald man in a suit. Nice. Now, if you look at my headshots, all of them are me in a suit. <laughs> and I'm like, 
Hollywood finally needs me. That's... <laughs> so, so, um, it's, so it's like putting the beacon up in the sky that all yeah. of a sudden they're like, Hey, we need Paul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> la, 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 la. You know, I have the bust of Mozart, That's right. you know, and I push right. the red button, I slide down a pole. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's the one role I can play. Um, so anyway, so I just respond to it. And, you know, when you're self-casting, you, re you respond to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these types of emails. And maybe you get one or two even auditions off it. So I just respond. I don't think anything of it. And then like two minutes later, I get a call, which never happens. I get a call from a casting director. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Are you Paul? Yeah, I just saw your headshot. Can you come to Hollywood Avenue? Blah, blah, blah. You know, like gives me this right address. Now. It was like on Sunset or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, I'll be right there. She's like, wear the suit you're wearing in your headshot. So I'm like, OK. <laughs> so I put that suit on. I go to this base camp. And as soon as I show, you can kind of tell the level of production based off of the base camp. You know what I mean? Right, if you right. show up, and it's like three like uh college seniors <laughs> with like a bowl full of like ritz crackers you're like okay this is a student film but this had like full production trailers uh, you know big trucks just full of production gear um right, you know the right. big motor homes and stuff and i and this was just base camp so i was like oh okay wow. yeah so you know i show up and they bring me through a wardrobe they have a whole wardrobe trailer and it's <laughs> funny the wardrobe person opens the door to the wardrobe trailer looks at me and she goes yeah you're good because <laughs> <laughs> i was wearing exactly what i wore in my headshot which was bald man in suit then i went to another trailer which was all the paperwork i had to fill all of the forms and everything right. and then they're like okay we'll have a pa come pick you up you know walkie-talkie bald man giant, in suit <laughs> yeah, this big exactly like yeah we have bald man in suit at base camp this big you're like giant, i have a name i oh, have no, 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 it's bald man in suit wait what's my name shoot um <laughs> So this gigantic, uh, like, 12-passenger, all-black, tinted windows van pulls up to base camp. You know, these PAs run out. I get in. I'm the only one in there. And then they drive me to Andaz, which is this really nice resort right next door to the comedy store on Sunset. Right. And, uh, and they take me in, and they take me up, like, eight floors, you know, and then there's, like, these, like, reflection pools and stuff. It's, like, really fancy. And then they walk me into this ballroom which had been converted into a restaurant and it's this really nice restaurant scene. And they had told me nothing. All I know is we need a bald man in a suit. And as soon as I walk in, I look over and there's this table right in the center of the window, looking out to Hollywood. Um, and it's Justin Long and Colby Smolders. Uh, if you don't know those two, Colby Smolders was how I met your mother. Right. She was Robin and Justin Long has been in every movie. Matter of fact, I just watched galaxy quest. He was the, like the teenage boy in galaxy quest. Like mom, you have no idea. They have <laughs> but he's been in, I mean, yeah, so many movies. Another one of those Rock actors Rock. that's in everything. Yeah. It's in, in everything. everything. Right. Right. Yeah. So I remember kind of being like, Oh, wow. Because that was the first time I was still new to Hollywood. That's the first time I'd ever been on set with like A-list celebrities. And so I kind of had that that moment. So I end up, they kind of brush me over to the side and there's this whole group of extras and we're all dressed very nice because it's like a romantic dinner scene. So I just sit there. I don't do anything for three hours. <laughs> and then finally they do a reset and they turn all the cameras around because all the cameras were pointing out towards the um you know, the, you couldn't really see what was in the restaurant. So they turn all the cameras around so you can see the restaurant now. Right. They bring all the extras in, they sit me down and I have like my menu or whatever. And then they're like action. And Justin long, there's a point where he's talking to Kobe smolders and he goes, Hey, do you see that bald guy in a suit over there? <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> that's why they needed me. And I looked around at all the extras. None of the extras were bald. So like I can just, so all of a sudden this whole night just made sense to me like some casting oh. director is getting a call by some director going we need a bald man in a suit none of these extras are bald you need and so she <laughs> sends out her casting notice i respond she calls me they get me there <laughs> just so justin long can go hey look at that bald man in a suit over there <laughs> right after he does that they wrap the whole night <laughs> so I for three yeah, hours. That was it. they did one take Anyway, the whole point of this is after we got up, I was just walking off set and Justin Long walks right by me. And it was just kind of one of those like, I know who this guy is. He doesn't care about me. And we just kind of had this. I just kind of looked at him, <laughs> gave him like a little. He just kind of acknowledged me like, yes, you're a human being. And yes, you're a human being. And that was oh, it. You're the bald man in the suit. 
<laughs> the bald manic suit. So the appendix to that story is the movie came out. It's called um, literally right before Aaron. And I watched it and my scene was cut. No. <laughs> <laughs> story of my life. Yeah. yeah. So they, I mean, there was there was a scene of that restaurant scene, but they cut my part of the, you know, the part of the dialogue where he says. That. <laughs> so I'm like, so they did all of that work to pay me to get me to go out there, get me, drive me out there to film this one little take. And, and then they don't even use it. And <laughs> it's on the cutting room floor. <laughs> and that's what Hollywood's like there, in case any of you are wondering. <laughs> uh, I remember, uh, just this is just a brief story on that. Uh, Gary Parker of the Oxymorons, uh, he was mm-hmm. cast in, in, in uh, Three Kings. And he had this big, long scene where he's handing out mail to everybody. Colonel blah, 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 Sergeant, blah, blah, private, blah, blah, blah. And he's, you know, he's giving all of these. And it's like in, in the deleted scenes, <laughs> which of course is where that ends up, right? Uh, right? It's like a five minute segment and they had him on set like all day. And uh, anyway, I just remember that uh, being, that was my first experience of like, wait, you could be in a movie, but not be in a movie? Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. And you want to know what? <laughs> you can also not be in a movie and still not be in that movie. <laughs> so it goes both ways. Like, you would be surprised how many movies I'm not even in. Nice. And I yeah. and I don't even get credit for it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not credited. I wasn't cast. I wasn't paid. Well, I actually, like, like, I, 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 actually <laughs> I actually was a uh, production assistant on the movie um, Eight Legged Freaks. Uh, during production and all that, it was actually called Iraq Attack. That was like the the, the working title. And I worked in the uh, in the production office with Emerald em, uh, uh, Emerald Roll uh, Emric Roland uh, Roland Emric. I'll get his name right. This is probably why I'm not on the credits. Uh, Emmerich got cut anyway, so we don't care about him. Uh, yeah, no, he did. He was the producer, executive producer that like did like Independence Day and and Godzilla and all of those. So um, anyway, worked like literally like right same office everything with this guy, and uh, and I didn't get credit. I think it was because. Um, I, I upset the lady that I was working with. Uh, <laughs> so like, yeah, well, you're not getting any credit for this movie. So anyway, did I was, you, uh, when I was she was sitting at her desk, did you sneak up behind her and be like, <laughs> you are the sexiest producer on this entire movie? <laughs> I did do that. Only it wasn't her. It was Roland Emmerich. So <laughs> uh, okay. I'm sorry. But yeah. Fired. <laughs> you're fired. Okay, so Paul, we've got uh, we do have some people who are asking questions. So there's a couple of um, a couple more people chiming in, and uh, wanted to see if you have any thoughts or comments on some of these. How about some cooking fails? Are you a good cook? Is there any uh, any I stories am, of cooking? I am not a good cook. However, I I did attempt. Um, a friend of mine brought over these. It's a double layer. It's brownie and chocolate chip cookie mixed together, right? Ooh, if you can imagine that. So it's yes. like a layer of just regular brownie and then chocolate. You can find them. I think it's Betty Crocker. It's just one of those boxes that you get of like brownie mix, but it's brownie mix and chocolate chip cookie mix. A friend brought over like a batch of those and they were delicious. So I'm like, I want to do that. And I have tried three times to mimic the glory of those. <laughs> and every batch I come out, I mean, like they're okay, but it's just something missing. Like I just don't have that, like that magical culinary touch that just really makes it pop. You know, like yeah. my brownies were like a little dry, or you know, re- came out a little stale, or they were a little. I don't know. I just couldn't quite get the primo brownie chocolate chip cookie uh, production that I wanted well uh speaking of brownies um i won't say which one of my children but one of my children was making brownies the other day and apparently the pan uh had like a <laughs> like a, a a bow in it and so like one side of the pan had like the the mixture was like all like really thick like right up to the edge and uh, in order to get that cooked you had to cook it a little bit longer uh but this side <laughs> right. you know it's like you know it was it was like burnt crusty it's like this real real th- paper thin uh and so uh we had to actually put that uh put that pan out to pasture so mm. <laughs> yeah i don't have i don't have too many uh good cooking stories but uh how about this uh let's see <clears throat> 
There's some more questions here. How about any funny holiday uh, dinner stories like Thanksgiving or Christmas? Any, any, or really any uh, any holiday stories? Holiday. What? Do you, yeah. Let's start here. Where do you, what do you usually do for the holidays? I know you've got a lot of family here in Arizona. Do you come back home? Yeah. You know, I. I'm kind of a I'm kind of a Scrooge to be honest when it comes to holidays like this this year like I mean I went home for Thanksgiving and it was great it was also my dad's 70th birthday so I did Thanksgiving and then we had a huge brouhaha for my dad all of the kids all of the grandkids um, but then for Christmas I'm like you know that's enough I uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm good I wish I could do that yeah. with my kids <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm totally kidding. I actually do enjoy being with my kids and my family. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't. No, uh, so yeah. So you know, but for this Christmas, it's funny because I do get a little like seasonal depression. Like I get a little down, you know. And uh, I'm actually part of this uh, mental health uh, nonprofit called You Matter Not Alone. You can look that up. We actually, ooh, can I do a plug? Can I do a shameless plug? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You better not a shameful plug. Um, <laughs> so we're doing a uh, we're doing an online comedy fundraiser uh, comedy show next Saturday at 6 p.m. We have some amazing comedians, so it'll be online. Obviously, you can join from anywhere. Uh, you can get tickets. The we want people to show up, so it's a minimum uh, ticket price of one dollar. Or if you pay, uh, if you pay fifty dollars, you get a T-shirt, and if you pay a hundred dollars, you get a hoodie. Um, great, nice. great comics. Uh, but anyway, uh, so I'm a, I'm a member of that organization, and they're always putting out like memes, you know, like motivational memes, actual motivational memes. And and one of them was like about seasonal depression, and like one of the things it said is like, if you know, don't uh, don't do anything based off of somebody else's expectations. And it was, it right. says something about family. Like if, if spending time with your family, if you don't really want to do it, like take care of yourself. And I was like, you know, I love my family. I get along great with them, but I had just been there and I'm like, that's a lot of work to go back <laughs> and then, you know, see everybody. Cause you know, I've got my mom, I got my dad, I got my brothers. And I'm like, you want to what? I'm just going to stay home and just yeah get some me time. And what I did instead, which was super helpful, is I did a total makeover of my living, of my room, of my bedroom. I got rid of like all my old furniture. I nice. bought like all new furniture. I cleaned it up super nice. I went totally Marie Kondo on it, organized everything. So like it totally lifted like, you know, my energy and my spirit and everything because I was working on me and doing what I want instead of doing what was maybe expected or like, right. oh, this is something I have to do. But I stayed home, took care of myself, totally uh, made over my room, and I felt great. So I don't think that's specifically what they were looking for, but in improv, you know how it goes, Jeff. We take the <laughs> suggestion and we run with it. And we run with it. You bet. Um, actually, speaking of that, um, Lee Baird has a question for you. If you had the option of adoption, uh, adopting a baby fox... Or a baby koala, which would you choose? And oh, koala why? all day long. Koala all day long because foxes, they're just conniving. I wouldn't trust it. Koalas, they just want to cuddle. They're totally dependent. Uh, and I think they're cuter. So <laughs> koala all day long. No question. No question. Sit there and chew on eucalyptus all day <laughs> yeah, long. Yeah. The, I love eucalyptus. Both of I have us. eucalyptus oil that I put in my diffuser. So... <laughs> Little eucalyptus for the koala, little eucalyptus for the diffuser. <laughs> Everybody's happy. Everybody's, Everybody's happy. Yeah, everybody wins. <laughs> Except for probably the koala who would prefer to be out in the wild. Yeah. Well, we're running uh, running a little bit tight on time, but I wanted to t uh, touch base on one, uh, one more topic here, and that is the topic of self-help. I know you're mm. really, really big on this. You're all about motivation. You're all about, uh, you know, uh, doing something bigger and more with your life. Uh, and so uh, you've started this thing called the uh, a daily motivational tip. Is that correct? Yeah, you know, it's just it's just my opportunity, I think, to give back, you know, to the world, to kind of bless them with motivation, make them feel better about life. Life can be tough and. I just really feel like I have a lot to offer. You know, I'm I'm very successful. I'm very charming. I'm you know very wise. Um, so yeah, I just was like you know I'm just gonna 
just put a little a little motivation out there every day. Just give people a little, you know, if you're struggling, just give them a little push. I, yeah, did you, do you have one uh, queued up there, actually? Yeah, I was just uh, I was just about to uh, to let me see if I can get this uh, get this going. I'm, I'm uh, if you'll give me just a second, I'm gonna try to. Um, uh, I don't know if we can just because this is uh, this is new software and I haven't actually brought in a web page. Uh, uh, yet. <laughs> and if Ooh. so, I don't know if we're going to get the, uh, the audio to it as well. So we're going to try something. And if not, I've already put a link in, uh, in the chat for somebody. So let me see what, uh, let me see if I can pull this up. So a new, new web page. Uh, you know what? It's saying that I need flash. So probably don't. I thought, I thought, I thought flash was discontinued. Well, it's uh, yeah. I don't know. It said uh, need a flash player. Some things need a flash player. So, all right. So I've put it in. Uh, I have put it in the chat, and uh, and so therefore I hope that you'll go to that. Let me see if I can. Um, at some point, you don't have to do this right now. But uh, at the end of uh, the end of our show, there are a couple of things in there. One, go check out Paul's motivational. Uh, it's a daily motivation, right? It's daily motivation. Yeah, you can tip. find them at Paul Green Comedy on my Instagram, Paul Green Comedy on my Facebook, Paul Green Comedy on TikTok, Paul Green Comedy on Twitter, <gasps> Paul Green Comedy on YouTube, Paul Green Comedy on Snapchat, Paul Green, Paul Comedy, Green Comedy on Comedy Tinder, on <laughs> Tinder, LinkedIn, <laughs> any social media platform. I post these daily, and it's just Paul Green Comedy. You know, it just, you know, just just give your day a little boost. Wonderful. Hey, Paul, thank you so much for, uh, for joining me, uh, us today. Uh, and thank you for all that you're doing to continue to bring laughter into this very interesting, uh, I don't want to say dark times cause, uh, they're just interesting times, but you know, bringing some light and laughter in uh, some sort of a darkness is always good. So thank you so much for all that you're doing, uh, your daily stuff. Uh, we are going to be adding these daily motivations to the Fun E Network, spotlighting Paul Green comedy. So we hope that uh, hope that not only uh, will you check that out on Fun E Network, but that you will follow Paul and uh, follow him on all of his social media. If you ever see him out in public, you can follow him home. Uh, that's uh, that's not actually a bad up, thing. Just lean up behind me and just say you are the sexiest man ever. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Just make sure that he's not deaf in any of his ears. So, mm -hmm. all right. Well, Paul, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we appreciate uh, appreciate you, and uh, we wish you well in Hollywood, the Hollywood. Likewise. So. Thank you so much. Pleasure being here, Jeff. Appreciate you. Jeff really was responsible for getting me started in comedy jesters was really my first four way for a for a i don't know what word i'm trying to say there uh venture into comedy and really cut my comedy teeth got my ten thousand hours and you know i wouldn't uh wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for jesters and for jeff uh jeff actually uh i, I was always nervous to actually do improv but it was <laughs> jeff i used to go all the time i'd be in the audience and i'd be like hey jeff will you put me on stage because i like i wanted to right. but i didn't know and right. then jeff was like oh, why don't you just take classes and if it wasn't for that invitation who knows i may never have had the courage but jeff reaching out to me inviting me to go to classes and then into the troop, uh, you know, it never happened. So I owe a tremendous debt of gratitude to Jeff and the jesters as well. Well, thank you, Paul. Uh, sure. Appreciate it. And you, uh, like I said earlier in the program, uh, you know, when an audience is asking for our performers, uh, you know, just having you on the stage, uh, was always, uh, such a huge, uh, huge blessing. So thank you so much for joining me, uh, for joining us. We do wish you success in all that you do again, please make sure we're going to put this in the comments. Uh, we'll put, uh, how you can get in touch with Paul, uh, through all of his social media. We'll put all those links up for you and, uh, give, show Paul the love, uh, follow him and, uh, you know, subscribe all of that. So. All right. Well, thank you so much. I think that we are at the end of our show. So we're going to sign off and say good night. We hope that you have an incredible weekend. Stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, give 
um, give uh, give the gift of laughter to somebody. However, however you can do that. If you'd like, we offer uh, the gift of funenetwork.com. You can give that as a gift for fifteen dollars a month, or give that annual uh, subscription and uh, give the gift of laughter. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Hi everybody. 